Picture this, you've just moved into your brand new home and you're throwing a housewarming party. However, you realize in the distance there's a suspicious couple who you never invited. But they look nice enough. After interacting with them, you realize they're a little different. They're actually a pair of sociopaths trying to convince you and your wife to kill each other. How would you survive? In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to beat the sociopathic killers from the movie who invited them. And as usual, if you enjoy this type of video, make sure to subscribe as well as leave a comment because it really helps the channel out more than you can imagine. Our movie begins with a little Asian kid walking up the stairs and calling for his mom and dad because it appears that he's having a nightmare. However, when he sees no response at the door, he looks down at his feet, only to realize there is blood pouring out of the door. Lucky for this little kid having a nightmare, he was actually having a nightmare, and he wakes up and nothing has actually happened to him. We then meet our two main characters, Adam and Margot, who are a couple that have just recently moved into a very nice house. They seem to be extremely excited for the new life that awaits them in this house. However, Margot expresses concerns that she feels like something or someone is watching them. Adam just chalks this down as new house syndrome and tells Margot not to worry about it, which I agree with, because guess what guns are for? Later in the movie, we find out that Adam has now thrown a giant housewarming party inviting some of his closest friends, but hearing the dialogue of some of his friends, we could see that not everyone likes him and they think he's a bit of a show-off. Now personally, if I had a house as nice as him, I'd probably be a show-off too. Adam, as the host, delivers a marvelous toast to his guests, however he finds something very odd, a couple that looks very young and probably pretty normal, however he doesn't recognize them at all, and it catches him off guard. We're then introduced to another unnamed couple. And and the man does not seem to like Adam at all. It's only because of his wife that he came to the party anyways, and he's begging his wife to leave. The woman then runs into the man that was part of the strange couple that Adam didn't recognize, and he's just really creepy and then asks where the bathroom is after emerging from the couple's bedroom. That's just, that's really odd. Luckily for everyone here, nothing seems to happen. He may be creepy, but he's no killer, and it appears that everyone has shuffled out of the party without a problem whatsoever. While the unnamed couple are driving down a dark alleyway, they run run over something, and the husband goes to check it out, however he comes back in the car saying it's nothing, and this is the last we hear about that couple till the end of the movie. Meanwhile, back at the house, Adam and Margot are just chilling on the couch, unwinding after the party, and when Margot gets up to get something from the freezer, a creepy man stares back at her. Yeah, it's that creepy guy from before, and he hasn't left their house yet. Adam, coming to find the situation, obviously isn't very happy, and I wouldn't be either. Just remember what guns are for. Adam, however, is a little more or less violent, probably because he doesn't play League of Legends for 6 hours a day. As Adam kicks them out, however, it turns out that they're actually the neighbors, and they just came to check in on the party because someone from the party had ran over their lawn and broken some of their lights. Adam, who's a bit of a gold digger, finds out that couple is actually extremely rich, and feels compelled to invite them over for an after party because he feels sorry he messed up their lawn. Now I find the situation extremely odd for two reasons. Number one, when you move into a house, you usually know who the neighbors are beforehand, or at least you kind of get to meet them when you're moving in. Secondly, if they really were your neighbors, they would have told you something about someone running over their garden or whatever before joining your party. They wouldn't just instantly join without saying a word and then stay at your house. I think the correct thing would be to kick them out and ask questions later. And whatever you do, don't do cocaine with the random strangers who just broke into your house and threatened to stay there. Yeah, don't do it. Margo, what the fuck are you doing? It turns out that these two pairs actually got on pretty well, probably not to their advantage because you could definitely tell that there's something suspicious going on. Things start to get really odd when Tom, who is the male neighbor, pulls Adam aside and starts asking him about the house. And Adam confesses that his wife doesn't yet know, but the reason is because someone got murdered in the house previously. Now this would definitely raise some red flags that would put me on high alert, because if they really were the previous neighbors, wouldn't they already know that the previous owner got murdered, like that would be on the news and stuff, right? Now honestly, if I were Adam, I would have kicked him out after Tom suggested that he should have a threesome with him and his wife. Like at that point, I don't even care if they're neighbors anymore. Meanwhile, Margo is in the basement with a female neighbor, Sasha, who claims to be a listener of Margo's old band. After figuring out Margo used to date the lead singer of that band and that Adam is insecure about that, Sasha literally forces Margo to call the lead singer at night when she's drunk and high. 
so it's pretty much fucked up that she's trying to make Margot cheat and mess up their relationship. Later, the two couples come together and understandably they start arguing with one another, and the neighbors suggest some nice therapy, except their therapy involves punching each other with each grievance. I don't know about you, but it'd fucking suck to be Mike Tyson's wife. This quote unquote therapy only ends after Adam punches the wall and injures his hand. After then, he and Margot have a little bit of a bonding experience where they say, yeah, it's probably best if the neighbors leave. And I'm surprised it took them this long to figure that out. Things get extremely awkward when Adam goes to let the neighbors out. However, on the door, he sees a note from the real neighbors telling them to keep the volume down. Adam, now full of rage, realizing that they're actually not the real neighbors and probably just a random couple just terrorizing them, now tries to force them to leave, using a beer bottle to attack the neighbors. However, they quickly explain that they're just the other neighbors from the other side of the house. I don't know why they believe that bullshit, but in the movie, Adam and Margot just cough this up a mistake and let them out. You'd think the movie just ends there, right? Well, no, because that would just be a really boring movie and I probably wouldn't be making a video on it. A few seconds later, the couple is about to go to bed. However, Margot finds that Sasha left her earring there, so he gets Adam to go to the neighbor's house and return it, because after all, they have to be the real neighbors. They win inside the house, right? After Adam reaches the door, he hears people inside screaming, call the police. So so Adam is also dragged inside and bound, and it turns out that these two aren't just their neighbors. They kidnapped the neighbors, took their identity, and is now killing them. And Margot makes an even stranger discovery inside her closet, when she finds that Tom and Sasha had been measured there for years, meaning they had lived there as kids, and were the surviving twins from the murder that had happened there. And that makes it even more weird, because Tom and Sasha are twins and not a couple, and they convinced their parents and foster parents to kill themselves and made it look like a murder, and now they're killing their neighbors for revenge, because they thought the neighbors had let them go neglected when their parents were abusing them. Luckily for our main characters though, Tom and Sasha decided that Adam and Margot were a good couple who loved each other and were willing to stand up for what was wrong, so they decided to spare them this time. However, the neighbors were just not so lucky. <laughs> After Tom and Sasha dispatch the two previous couples, they then run outside, where they run into the other partygoer who came back to kill the animal that they had ran over. However, they ran into Tom and Sasha instead. Tom stabs the partygoer, who stumbles into her trunk to get her hunting rifle, which she previously would have used to put down the animal. However, instead, she aims and shoots at the nearby running thing, which turns out to be Adam. Now, personally, if I were this random person, I definitely would have driven off instead of pulling out a gun. When you get out of the car, you're just gonna get stabbed more times. You're still sitting in the car, so you could easily just drive away and run Tom and Sasha over. So that concludes that part of the movie. Tom and Sasha end up escaping, and luckily though, it doesn't seem like Adam was killed. He merely got a scar across his face, and he's listening to the radio broadcast about the crime of what happened. It appears that after the whole situation, Adam and Margot are living a much happier life than before, and Margot is finally feeling comfortable in her new home. I don't know about you, but serial killers who just killed my neighbors and almost killed me, being on the run probably doesn't make me want to live in the same house anymore. But hey, if that's what helps girls enjoy their new homes, then so be it. If I were in their shoes, I would have at least upgraded the house, because you could see from this that they literally don't have a single security camera in sight. It appears the ending of this movie had a little bit of a twist, because Adam plays his favorite record, the same one they danced to earlier in the movie. However, this time, the record is a little different. It's a lot newer, just like Tom promised he would buy Adam a new one. So that means Tom and Sasha are probably still in the house. And that, my friends, is how you could have survived the Who Invited Them movie. All you really needed was some security, some common sense, and probably some machine guns. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a comment and hit that subscribe button. My usual videos are just a bit longer, but I've been a bit busy, so sorry about the short video. Well, that's it for me, Andrew from Obsessive Films, signing out.